following Friday's defeat at home to Sligo Rovers in the Premier Division and a slow start to the new campaign by Dundalk FC, criticism of the club's ownership has begun to grow in the town. So earlier today, I headed into Dundalk to catch up with a number of supporters and get their views on some of the hot topics surrounding the Lily Whites at the moment. I also caught up with Kieran Callan, who is proposing a new supporters club be formed at Dundalk. Here's what they all had to say. Fan to have a discussion about what's happening at Oriel Park at the moment. First of all, tell us your name and how long you're following the town. Uh, Brian Dunn, following Dundalk since 1988. So so you've seen a lot of good times, a lot of bad times. A lot of bad times as well, yeah. Some uh, people would say it's a bad time at the moment. Um, on the field, results not going the way people would have expected. But um, from speaking to fans today around the town, seems to be a lot of anger about the, the general running of the club. What's your own feelings? Yeah, it's not great now at the minute. Um, notwithstanding that there's good staff up there, mm. um, doing their best for the club who've been there through the good times. Um, I just think running a club by proxy from three odd thousand miles away, it's starting to fall apart. Mm. Um, it's not working and something needs to change and fast. And of course, it's not helped by the managerial situation at the moment. Still no manager, uh, a good couple of weeks on now since uh, Shane Keegan and Filippo left the club. Uh, what's your thoughts on, on the on-field side of things? Well, as far as the management side of things goes, I think maybe there's something afoot there and they're waiting on seasons to end. Mm. I think there's something going on. I think there's a man in, in mind. Um, now, there's been a lot of talk about David Eady out of Belfast and different things, but I definitely think there's somebody been lined up for the job and that's why they're holding off. But if they communicated that with the fans... Is that the big issue at the moment? Do you feel there's a lack of communication coming out with the club? Well, there's communication coming from the club. I mean, Mr Magelton's given a couple of different um, interviews, but they're not very clear. Now, he's supposedly the director of football. Mm. If anybody knows what's going on, he should know what's going on. Um, I suppose it's not ideal either that he's doing the, the first team duties at the moment and trying to be director of football at once. That He, he surely can't commit all of his time to both. No. So, his role as director of football, I appreciate that, but... Um, my point is that if he's going to have somebody lined up, have somebody to take the job, knows who it is, knows when they're going to take over, let us know. Mm. Because all of this uncertainty with what's going on with the first team, with the way they're playing, with the management side of things, is not helping the anger of the fans, regardless of that. Mm. I think it could pacify fans somewhat if the team were playing like they should be, notwithstanding what's going on in the background. But when both are up in the air, I think that's not happening. So you do you do feel there's a sense of anger around the town? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... And is that going to come to a head? Because um, I'm sure you've seen it yourself. There's a there's a, a Facebook page at the moment suggesting a protest ahead of the Shamrock Rovers game. Um, do you think the vast majority of the fans will be in favour of that? Or is it the wrong way to go about things, in your opinion? Well, I think the fans need to have their voice heard. Mm. I do. Um, the, the mechanics of how that ha operates, I'm not just 100% sure on whether that's the best idea um, I can understand why it's been formulated um, I think there are other ways of going about it um, but that's not for me to say that's that's just my own opinion will you support that protest I will I will support it insofar as it's peaceful and gets the point across um, we've enough trouble going on with mm. the club the, obviously the goal of the protest if you read the Facebook page and the statements coming out from that group is they want the removal of the chairman um, what's your thoughts on that? Well, we don't have a chairman we have a chairman who's sitting 3,000 miles away who knows nothing about Dundalk Football Club um, so yeah removal of the chairman absolutely mm. I agree with that and what, does it stop at that for you if the chairman's removed and maybe a local man gets that job and someone more attached uh, what, do you, what do you want to see happen off the back of that protest aside from the removal of the chairman? Well, the biggest thing for Dundalk over the last, well, especially the last 10 years, has been continuity. Um, even with the Pig 6 takeover, things seem to roll along as normal. Um, but over the last 18 months, that's all just fallen apart. Now, it's no coincidence that a change of chairman around that time, and things have just snowballed. Mm -hmm. So, yes, by all means, that chairman needs to go. Um, the replacing of him is another conversation for another day. First port of call is to change the chairman. Thanks for speaking to me. I'm Ian McCabe, my name. I'm living in Dunleo and I've been a dark supporter ever since I was 12, 13, 14 years of age. Mm. Uh, we're doing these videos today because there seems to be a lot of anger in the town at the moment about what's happening at the club, not only the on-field results, but there seems to be a lot of people frustrated with the way the club has been ran. What's your own views on all of that? 
I don't think there was a word ever put in the English vocabulary to express my disgust at what's happening to the club, to Dundalk. Since that takeover, it has changed the whole face of soccer in this town. That club, Dundalk Football Club, belongs to the people of the town, to the children of the town. But what have we at the moment? Nothing but say, here say, this must be going on, what row is going on, things like that. It's an absolute disgrace. Do you feel, Bill, it, do you feel a disconnect? Yes. Bill Shankly said something famous years ago. He says, football and running of football is a simple thing. It is, was invented by people who know what they were talking about, not what you have at the moment, mayhem. And to tell you the truth, may God forgive me for saying it, I thank that we have COVID, that we were stopped from going places, because I would have been absolutely sick looking at what happened, especially on last Friday night. And I'm the type of person who would speak out. You take all the young people that's there, the swallows and dog, the old people that follow and dog, and to see what's happening. A club that was built up by people making collections at weekends, running bingo, running raffles, and now what have you. Money came into the club, but it destroyed it. And what you have is you're looking at five players, extra dark players, playing with new clubs. What happened there? Were they offered any money? They got foreign players in. And I have to say, what I've seen on the television, there was five players last Friday night in Orient Park. They haven't a clue about football. My advice, stop it before it gets out of hand completely. Money was spent on the players. This is what we're reading about. But what was spent on the grounds? What coverage have you? You have people that have followed the dog for years, standing on the terrace on the east side of the main stand. And there's seats there. What have you? No covering. And I was there last year, the, uh, the European matches, and I had to sit down on the seats and there was people and they had umbrellas. I was soaking. Wasn't long out of hospital and I started shivering and I went down and I went to the toilet and I was standing right along the main stand. And there was two men there in yellow coats and said to me, you can't stop, stand here. I said, but I don't feel the best. Well, he says, we'll have to leave. They were standing there. What was wrong with that? Then you have the far side of the ground. And it's great to see the young people that's there. Now I'm referring to the shed side. The shed side should be shifted from there and put behind, and we stand behind the town goals. The reason? They put off them flares eh, when the people who are broadcasting the matches, televising the matches, and this is an absolute disgrace. And I was there two years ago at a European match, and I had to stand up to see what was happening down at the town goals. I was supposed to be sitting, and there was an old woman said to the young, young lads, look lads, will you sit down? And the language they used of that woman was out of order. To me, that's not true to dark support. It is not true. But something has to be done. Otherwise, we may forget about it. And if we'll tell you something, the ramifications for soccer and football in this town is going to suffer badly. Because what I've seen on Friday night, you could go to the summer league and you could pick players who want to play for the town. The tactics are all wrong. Backing putting the ball back to the keeper, going out to the, back to the keeper, and then he kicks it away. Whereas you get it out of your own area. There was something that I learned years ago, listening to a man talk about supper. He says, you play football in the opponent's half, not in your own half. And I said, that changes. I'm not a manager. I didn't do a course. I haven't got these uh, certificates. But the man that we had, that was over the team for the cup final last year, hasn't got the certificates, but he has the knowledge. So forget about what you're doing at the moment. If you really care about soccer in this town, change it. Change it for the better. I'm here with Dundalk FC fan Jay McKeown. Jay, tell us first of all how long are you supporting Dundalk FC? 
it, all my life, it's just one of the things, I can't remember not being a dog fan, so it's it's ingrained in me, and it's traditionally something my family's always done as well, it was handed down. Mm. And uh, I know after the game on Friday night, you had quite an impassionate um, speech up on your social media, and it was picked up by a few different kind of Dundalk accounts and stuff, and that's why I wanted to speak to you today. Um, aside from, obviously, the poor results on the field at the moment, you feel that maybe there's a disconnect in the community between the club and the fan base. Why do you think that is? Well, first and foremost, I mean, we have to go back to the reason why we are so successful in the last number of years is because every Dundalk fan was on board of the club. The club, the players, the backroom staff were all pulling in one direction. It seems to me that since, not necessarily peak six, but since our current chairman was installed, that that connection has been diluted. Its importance wasn't, isn't being valued as it should be, or as it was. And the reason behind it, only, only Bill can probably answer that. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you well, why. He, in credit to Bill, he did do a, an interview last week with James Rogers. Uh, I'm sure you listened to it. What was your immediate reaction to that? Were you pleased he came out and spoke, or were you unconvinced by some of his answers? It it was meaningless. I mean, he, he's doing that to hopefully deflect the criticism, but I, I just, I'm not buying into it. I can't. Not with the way things are being run. I can't. Uh, look, I know there's, um, I seen it on social media last night, there's a planned protest before the Shamrock Rovers game. Um, do you feel, uh, first of all, do you support that planned process? I, I honestly think at this stage of the game, if the Nordic fans don't make a stand and don't do something that can hopefully have an impact, we'll see at the identity of our club c- continue to chip away. So I think a, a, a protest and any, any, any type of protest is something I agree with. Now, it's up to not only Dundalk fans, but the town in general, to back this protest because we will have, I don't, I don't want to say a war coming, but we have a fight in our hands to save our club. And I know that's, that, that them words are something I thought I'd never say again, but mm. we were at crossroads here and if we don't make a stand, we could lose it. What's the goal of the protest? I mean, ultimately, you'd love to see the removal of Bill as our chairman because it's not working. Now, I know there is some people out there who are critical of peak six. We have to remember that when Mike Tracy was chairman, it was it was working. Uh, the the difference between Mike Tracy's tenure in charge and Bill's is night and day. So, I suppose. The obvious choice is to get rid of Bill, but it has to be stressed. It's not a, it's not a case that we want, to, we want rid of Peak 6. Peak 6 and the original goal is something that every dog fan could agree with. Now, it has changed. To put the major point of this protest is to get that back on track. And that when Peak 6 first arrived and the enthusiasm was shown, that we could pull in the same direction again. Yeah, thanks very much. I'm delighted to be joined by Kieran Callan. Kieran, uh, you're in the process of investigating maybe the possibility of re-establishing a supporters club at Dundalk. Um, for any viewers maybe not familiar with the, uh, the story, when was the last time Dundalk had a supporters club and uh, why did they not have one anymore? Um, from my recollection, the last supporters club per se was the Dundalk FC Trust, um, which I wouldn't say they disbanded, but I say it was discontinued on the part that a lot of the members um, became very active in the role in, in specific roles when um, Andy Connolly and Paul Brown took over at the club at Fast Fix. You had people like Colin Murphy, who became club secretary. You had Simon Blackmore, who was a club licensing club licensing officer for a period of time. Like those people were very active members of of the Dundalk FC Trust. So. I'm not saying that it ran its course, but I think they found that with the fact that Andy and Paul, that they knew that they, their, their talents would be best suited in the positions that they were given. And that worked out really, really well in the end. You know, we, we know from the success that, that happened over the, over the years after that, that it was a, it was a good decision to be made. Mm. Um, what has led you to, to think about setting up a new supporters club? What's, what's been the driving factor behind that? Uh, quite simply, Kieran, it's, it's, uh, uh, taking everything that's going on in Oriel Park away, I think that there are people up in Oriel Park that are coming up to a game on a Friday night. Yes, they're enjoying the games. Well, <laughs> they might be at the moment, but they're they're going up. They're enjoying the occasion. But then there's no aspect to it afterwards in order to continue to be part of the Dundalk FC community, which is I think is a very very important aspect of the club the club has always been a very community-based club and Mm. if we had a situation where supporters were able to join and be together outside of just Oriel Park through sanctioned events and through different social activities I think that that's going to benefit them in the long run it's going to benefit supporters and supporters experience they're going to feel that they're part of not just 
the Friday night. They're part of the town and the club and the community as a whole. So that's why I did an investigation. I spoke, I, I, I'm, I know a lot of people would know this on social media that I'm a member of the Pride, which is the FC Cincinnati's um, supporters club. And I looked at their model and I figured that this was a really, really good idea and it could be adapted for Dundalk. And that's exactly what I did. I, I brought a proposal together that I feel would benefit not only the supporters of Dundalk, but the community of, of the town as well. Um, I think we're coming, thankfully, we're coming out of what has been a really, really horrible time in the country for the past year and a half or so. And wouldn't it be brilliant to have something that you can integrate back into society through social elements as well as anything? Because I've seen it myself. I've seen it with other people that, you know, some people, because they've been in isolation for so long that, you know, they've forgotten how to socialize and they've forgotten how to interact with people properly and things like that that wouldn't it be brilliant to have something, an outlet for these people who might be a little bit shy, a little bit nervous about coming back out, that they have something that they can aim towards. Mm. What has been the initial the, the initial reaction? What's it been like so far? It's been good. It has been good. Now, I have to say there was a lot of people who, who came forward and, and there's a lot of people I want to thank in relation to that. There's been great support from people. Uh, Dean R. Smith and Chris Chris Clark um, on another podcast, The Town, and they brought me on, but they've been very good behind the scenes in the sense of um, I kind of felt after the first initial meeting that I I did pitch it and people were very enthusiastic, but there wasn't as many people on the Zoom call as I thought there'd be. Mm. Um, look, circumstances change and things like that, but maybe I'm what my thinking is I'm going to run another meeting and another uh, town hall meeting as I call it to put the idea together and see how it goes but the initial response has been very good people understand of what I'm trying to do that it's this isn't in relation to anything that's happening at Oriel Park this is for to build something organic to to last to last a long time because you can see in other other clubs like even yourself at Longford and stuff like that that every year pre-COVID you had your your end of year celebration nights and things like that like the dog having haven't been in a position to do that since 2013 which is a big shame because you're talking about all those successes yeah. that the dog have had and you know there's there's not been a there's not been a celebration of that where fans and players and everybody can come together well I think it's time that the community and the supporters of the dog do come together and kind of knock heads a wee bit and and, and hopefully bring something something good have you had any discussions with the club in regards to this uh, I have spoken to a member. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say specifically who, but I have spoken to a member who has been. Um, he's been very, very supportive. I have to say, and I ran the initial concept beside him. He's come back to me on a consultancy basis, and it, he's very much that he thinks that this is a good runner, if people are are invested in it. That's that's great to hear. Um, at this moment in time, what would you say the likelihood of this happening um, might be, and, and 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 can you give us any sort of time scale? Fifty fifty at the moment. That's being honest, okay. and that's and that's being generous. I think what a lot of people need to realise is that I I put the idea forward, and I've made this very clear from the standpoint that I'm not in a position because of my job and because of other commitments that I have around my work and th and and other things that. I'm not in a position where I could sit down and say, right, I want to build a committee around me and me going forward. I want people from Oriel Park. I want the talented people who I know that are there that can really um, push and drive this thing forward, but also give it the time and the commitment that it needs. Because establishing anything from scratch, as you know yourself with this podcast and with working with Head in the Game and other things like that and other company, other things, it's it's so hard at the very beginning and it requires mm. time and requires a lot of effort. So I simply don't have that. And I've been very upfront and honest about that. So I think it's it's very much up to supporters that who want to grab this by the scruff of the neck to think this is a good idea. It's for them to bring it forward. And you never know who's going to come out of the woodwork. And that's what I need. I need supporters to come out of the work work and say that this is going to be a good idea. I want to be part of something from the start because being part of something from the very beginning is always a very special kind of aspect because you can look back at it and say, well, I helped with that and look how big it's come now. Mm. No, look, it sounds it sounds absolutely fantastic. Mm. I think it's definitely something that's, that's needed. And I think probably a lot of League of Fa Ireland fans will be surprised to hear there's no real supporters group at Dundalk given the size of the club and the well, success they've had. Uh, well, I, I like there's groups within the club. Um, you know, you have the Shedside Army who are 
are like they're fantastic in terms of building their TFOS displays and their and and their general support of the club is fantastic. Then there's also another group which um, is called the Tie Rap Gang, yeah, which is Paul Grant, a brilliant group. But they and they, in essence, I kind of took the best bits from the Shedside Army, the best bits from the and and coupled with the idea that that I got from FC Cincinnati's The Pride that I felt that this is kind of a really important thing. But there were people who wouldn't identify with either group. They're kind of stuck in the middle and they've kind of got nowhere to go. This is aimed at them. If that makes sense, and, and I, I suppose those two groups as well. Um, as you said, the shed side is more atmosphere on match day. Mm. That's their kind of goal to generate that. And uh, I know the other lads do a lot of fundraising and other yeah. things, but neither have kind of, um, I suppose, a voice in terms of the way the club has been run. I'm sure mm. uh, if there was a unified supporters group like you're suggesting, yeah. maybe with everything that's going on now, there could be a bit more dialogue between the club and the main. If there was a main supporters group. Well, as I said in the in the Zoom, in the Zoom Town Hall meeting, that it wouldn't be my idea for me to try and absorb any group that's already there or any group of people. That would that would be very naive of me to to say that. I think it's important though that we work alongside these people. And if there was a situation like we're having at the moment, that we'd be able to come together and say, okay, what do you think needs to be said, and what do you think, and you can put in a unified voice and a unified statement which would mm. encompass it all Dundalk supporters but what would be very important that if this was the case of the Oriel the statement would have to go to the members and the members would have to say I like this I don't like this and, what, and it would have to be tweaked and, and amended to suit the narrative in which wants to be portrayed by, by those supporters I think that that's very important because people put out statements and sometimes you know it can be very hard overhead Um construction uh, constructive criticism is one thing but we just have to make sure that there's an open dialogue that's able to be engaged with afterwards because we've seen with not in Ireland but in other supporters groups where they've kind of gone hammer and tongs against their club their club has just shut them down and that's been the end of it you know you have to be in a position where you kind of leave the door open for both sides yeah look it sounds sounds very sensible to me and mm. um, finally you've touched on it yourself there there's a lot going on at, at Dundalk and at Oriel Park at the moment and um, yeah. I know there's a proposed supporters protest ahead of the Shamrock Rovers game what's your own thoughts on that situation? Um, look I, I I suppose from I, I'm very privileged that I'm able to go in and watch the matches and I, you know it seems at the moment that there's a lot of difficulties that are happening off the pitch that is permeating onto it which has led to, to a lot, like, there's been a lot of wholesale changes around the club which has been very it's been very hard to take because there are people that have departed the club that in reality have been more than just players. They've been legends. They've been friends. You know, you've gotten to yeah. know these people and um, it was very sad to see them go. I understand fans frustration and I understand fans anger because at the moment they're not able to go into the ground and show their displeasure of what's going on. They're mm -hmm. not able to voice in the shed or in the stand and, this seems to be their only outlet. I completely sympathise with them. I just hope that it is what what they want it to be, that it's constructive, that it outlines their position, um, and that in reality it doesn't do anything that's going to harm what's happening on the pitch. We saw um, what happened between Manchester United and Liverpool. Now I understand that that's a, a completely, but the Man United fans coming in and and going onto the pitch and things like that. That led to a fixture postponement, as we know. But you don't know what kind of fines that brought as well. And you don't know what kind of punishments that, that could lead down the line. And it's just very important the fans are aware that we don't want the club um, punished on the field for actions that happen off it, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm all for people exercising the right to be voiceful and to have a voice and to say that they're displeased with things that are going on. However, we just need to do it in the way that Dundalk people have done it time and time again in a good way and in a positive way and to ensure that it's for the best of the club. Yeah, no, I have to echo those sentiments. Uh, Kieran, been brilliant speaking with you this evening. No um, I want to wish you the very best of luck with the, the, it, looking into the supporters club and um, I'm sure we'll speak about it again down the line and, and we'll see how, how things are coming along. No problem, Kieran, anytime.